to the Metal Voice, a remote version of the Metal Voice. My buddy K-Man is joining me. I call him the King Diamond Expert. <laughs> Everything um, King Diamond, he's the go-to guy. I just love King Diamond. <laughs> well, Diamond. some exciting news. We're going to do a quick reaction and review on King Diamond's two new songs that he played in San Antonio on October 15th. So pretty exciting news. K-Man, how long has it been since he has promised a new album? Well, I, I saw him in 2014 and I met him and we spoke about a lot of different things and he, he was so excited to tell me that he was recording new songs that he'd come up with in his own studio for the next album. He specifically said he was really excited, he'd come up with loads of ideas and he was working away in his studio to record stuff for the new album. And here we are, 10 years later. I well, the, well then, then I met him in 2019. To, to add to your story, I met him. I had a conversation with him. Great person to talk to. He's, he loves his fans. He loves talking to his fans. Mm -hmm. That's what surprised me the most. I've said this before. I'll say it again. He said, The Institute, part one, then A Merciful Fate, EP, maybe an album, and then Institute Part 2. That's yeah. the sequence. This is the thing. I think he's taken a lot of flack because he's kind of eked this information out over such a long period of time. I mean, he's spoken to different magazines in France and Brazil. So every time he's come up with ideas, he, he's like a kid at Christmas, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The way he treats his fans, he's just as passionate about his music as, yes. as they are as well. So yeah. he's, he's the biggest King Diamond fan of all. So he knows what it's like. And so every time he, he's come up with a new idea, he's like, by the way, guys, I've got this, like I nearly died on the operating table and this is what the album's going to be about. And that happened way back in like 2012, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and every single, people say, oh, he's, he's, they're dragging their heels and they're doing this and that. He's been through so much, like not to not to like stick up for him or whatever, because it's been a long time, you know what I mean? People have been waiting 10 years, so I can understand as a fan, I'm like, how, how often can you say, oh, I've got a new album, I've got a new album, a new album, here we are, 11 years later, still no new album, but every single step of the way, he's been like, this is what we're doing, this is where we're going, this is the plan, you know what I mean? And then tours get, tours get, uh, then COVID, COVID shut us down for who knows how long, right? He slipped a disc in his back. He really injured himself. People forget, you know what I mean? He was totally out of the game. He'd geared himself up for that Give Me Your Soul Please tour. And yeah, that just yeah. wiped out completely. And so he had to go through major rehab for that. And yeah. then he had his triple bypass and he nearly died. You know what I mean? And then people so and people are like, Where the, where's the new album? And it's like, oh, yeah. I nearly died. He's had a son. Relax. But, you don't even relax, you know what I mean? folks. That's what it's like. It's like, <laughs> yeah, not, but this is this is the point I tried to make. It's not just a case of coming up with songs. Like, he writes the album from scratch, not just the ideas, but he builds the entire world. It's world building. It's not just all the songs on the album. It's the characters, their characters' backstory. There's, there's, we only get 10 songs, and we're like, there you go, it's 10 songs. <laughs> You've nailed it. You know what? It's a lot more complicated than yeah. just cranking out ten songs. And you know what? It's worth. It's going to be worth the wait. It's going to be worth the wait. The last tour, and this is the downside of the fact that they're now embarking on this new institute, Saint Saint Lucifer's Hospital, nineteen twenty. It's called this new tour. Every single step of the way, he's given us a bit more. When when I saw the last tour, it was based on this idea. But he hadn't established that he had the intro track of St. Lucifer's Hospital, but he didn't tell you that's what it was. So you had the kind of the medical symbols, but everything was kind of teased out. And so you had the, the cellar door with the nine on it and the 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 weird operating he wheeled a bit on a medical bed and he had an IV drip and you're like, oh, this is all new. Like and well, well, well uh, uh, you know, everything you're saying, bang on. I just want to say that we got Masquerade of Madness. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a new song that we've kind of been sitting with for a few years now, which is great. Mm -hmm. And and let's get right into it, man. Review, mm -hmm. reaction. So here we go. Review, reaction. Electrotherapy played for the first time yesterday in San Antonio 
and Spider Lily played for the first time as well. So this is what we'll do. We don't have a lot of time. We're going to do a quick, uh, what did it sound like? What era does it sound like? And of course, this is live. We're just basing it off the live fan fan video. What did the song sound like? What era does it sound like? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Any highlights? So let's start with electrotherapy. What'd you um, What'd you think? This what song did, just comes out comes out the gate swinging. You know what I mean? You've got that typical kind of King Diamond. Here's your lead riff straight away, and it's heavy and it's chugging and it's it's got all the elements that you want from the King Diamond song. What I really like about it is it's he's playing off that Masquerade of Madness kind of uh, theme. You're in, you're in the hospital. You're a, you, maybe you're a patient. Maybe you're undergoing this electroshock therapy, and it has that kind of, uh, kind of mood of the eye. You know, what I mean, everything like an interrogation. Yes, yes, you know, I like I that. Really yeah, got that sense of like there's there's keys underneath, and there's there's, uh, that the whole theme of like you're you're a prisoner and you're undergoing this treatment, uh really really kind of harkens back to the idea of that a lot of the stuff on the eye uh you know with the convent into the convent and uh 1642 imprisonment i think both of those i got kind of got both of those songs in the electrotherapy but it still has that kind of mask masquerade of madness kind of modern feel to it you know what i mean and the structure of the songs it's very straight to the point which is, yeah. which is cool yeah, I, I agree with you. It's got even like two guitar solos in it, you know, very mid-paced. I would say Puppet Masters, mm -hmm. uh, Puppet Master meets, uh, like you said, uh, the eye. It's got that sort of like thick sound to it. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is live. Maybe even a touch of them in terms of the sort of complicated instrumentation or musicianship throughout the song, but definitely thumbs up for me. What about you? I loved it. Uh, it's my favourite of the two songs that we've heard. I mean, the three songs, including Masquerade of the Madness, I thought it was the... Uh, it has all the elements you, you, you want from a King Diamond song uh, in the space of five minutes, you know what I mean? I really, really like it a lot. All right, perfect. So both thumbs up for us. Yep. I'm really looking forward to the song. I heard it and I go, wow, this is great. All right, Spider Lily. Here is, for me, myself, this is more reminiscent of Abigail era. There's mm -hmm. a lot of ahs and a lot of harmonies. Mm -hmm. The chorus, it starts off with the chorus in a sense. And then the chorus is more like the, I guess, I don't know. I, I, to me, it takes me back to Abigail. But the melody is unique. Yep. He hasn't exactly. really done this sort of harmony melody before. Yep. Uh, like you say, he's always focusing on, as a trade-off between the the... the the music and the melody, and this one is the vocal melody is the center of the the song. He spoke about this song or this character in a, in a magazine, uh, basically saying how she's an eponym, eponymous character in the story. So she's obviously going to be a, a major part of the institute and us following her. And then he introduces himself as a new character called Faceless at the start, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, so kind of playing off the idea of like identity and and madness and and like being trapped and are you meant to feel sorry for for these characters you, or not? You know he, he's he's good at playing with the emotions already. It makes you curious. You know what I mean? Why why do they sound as as tormented as they do? It's, it's cool. Yeah, I, I agree with you and everything you're saying. I mean, the also I should mention the musicianship is fabulous. Guitars, drums, and bass, they are locked in. You know, more solos. Mm -hmm. Mike Weed does a fantastic solo on this, by the way. I've only listened to the songs a couple of times, but the guitar guitars definitely stand out. And Matt Thompson's drums. Yes, he, we should say that. Yeah. He, for me, he was the star of the show the last time I saw the gig. The stuff he was adding in to the uh, the drum the drum fills on Masquerade of the Bandits were not on the studio track. So he was adding things in, and that was exciting as well. Um, so they're they're clearly building on that the bones of these songs that they've had for a while live. You're getting uh, they're they're building it up as they go, and it, it's only going to get better. These songs are only going to get better. 
Yeah, and, I agree with you. I mean, they could have been already recorded and now they're playing to what the recorded track is, or they could still be tweaking it in the studio, right? Saying, yeah. you know, that part worked live, that part didn't work live, or maybe it worked perfectly. Um, I'm very excited. I would prefer the Spider Lily more. I, I kind of like that song because I, I like the melody. It was a little out of the more out of the box. I wouldn't say too out of the box, yeah. but just a little bit different than our yeah. typical King Diamond sort of melodies. I think it's interesting because obviously he he's he's trying to get a different audience, a new audience as well as it keep the old fans. So yes. So is he te- intentionally writing some songs that are more straightforward to, to with a hook? You know what I mean? With a strong King Diamond hook, it still sounds like King Diamond. But there was a couple of times for me during both of the songs where I felt that the instrumentation takes a kind of back seat in order to let these prominent melodies as they should as they should sometimes right as they should whereas, as they should whereas if you if you think about the early early king diamond uh so much of it is about the force and the impact of the of the of yes. the, the band whereas whereas now it's all these elements combined and i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that or it's, it's somehow not as good. Uh, I love it all, like I love all you as a King Diamond. So for me, it's just exciting that we're, we are finally getting these new songs. And based on the rest of the set, these songs stand out because they're new. Like all the, no, no disrespect to the rest of the set, I love all the classic songs as well. But yep. there's something special about the fact that he's playing, they're going out and they're playing two songs, even three songs. There was a third song on, on the set that they didn't get to play. So it goes to show you that they've got a lot more surprises to come. You know what? Uh, hats off to King Diamond, hats off to the band. And Andy LaRock, of course, it's it's a no-brainer. This guy is, this guy's a wonderful co-songwriter or songwriter, a brilliant guitarist. We shouldn't leave him out. Um, I've got to yeah. say, um, I, I I would love to hear more from the, the new backing singer as well. She she's there for the first time, and you had Jody up on the up on the the balcony, uh, dressed up as new characters and spitting things out her mouth and stuff like that. It's it's interesting the new masks that King Diamond's wearing that uh, they disintegrate on a different. I don't know if you noticed on the second song, like it's. It's the same mask, but it's like broken in places that it wasn't before. Like he's, he's doing some cool stuff. He's he's definitely the devil in the detail, right? <laughs> Fantastic. And and this is built on the last tour. You know, he's really all the backdrops are all new, and the, there's props there that weren't. That's new. right. Look at this. So that's the new stage set, right? I mean, I yes. Know. It, it's just so much work, so much time, so much effort in the details of everything he does, from the storyline to the music, to the vocals, to the backdrop, and the merch. We should say the merch. Well priced and mm-hmm. really cool merch. Go pick up some merch. I want those. I want that scarf. I want that magic <laughs> scarf. It's really cool. On that note, K Man, thanks so much for being on. Okay. Uh, everybody, you know, looking forward to more King Diamond uh, surprises. I will be seeing him at the end of the month. Or no, actually, the beginning of next month, November the 2nd or 3rd. I don't remember which date. Montreal, Canada. Support King Diamond. Looking forward to uh, seeing him live.